that I'm actually working on is um, about quarter imperial, which is here in the UK, that's kind of a standard size watercolour paper. We tend to work in imperial sizes when it comes to the actual uh, watercolour. Um, and size in inches is about 11 by 15 inch roughly roughly doesn't really matter how big i mean a4 a3 whatever it doesn't matter it really doesn't matter what size you actually produce the picture folks um the surface of paper is a knot surface now a few people over the years have got a bit confused with what knot means basically it means it's not rough and it's not smooth it's as simple as that so it's kind of it's kind of somewhere in the middle it's like a medium grain texture you can just about make that out on this on the screen at the minute you can see a little bit of a fine grain that's the texture of the watercolor paper it's 140 pound in weight 300 gram that's a good quality paper this particular paper uh, is called Matthew Palmer watercolor paper we do um, sell this on the website again watercolor.tv folks beautiful cotton premium paper okay that's the sketch let's have a look down at the palette here we've got it all geared up we've got it all geared up here and um, i've got the water I've got some kitchen paper three brushes pretty much will do the job here now when i start painting i want to do it in about 30 minutes that's the plan we've got a big brush which in actual fact is a size 20 we've got a size 10 uh, brush and a size six those three brushes will do that this job one optional brush you might bring in might be a little square brush for creating some highlights a little bit later on towards the end as far as colors this entire painting and pretty much every painting from the book can be done with primary colors what are primary colors for those who aren't sure we've got yellow here this particular one is natural yellow light but a nice bright yellow we're going to use some of that uh, we've got a a crimson kind of red so this one's called natural red again these are all available on this website here at watercolor.tv for those people that are interested and we've got a blue which of course is the third uh, of the primary colors this particular one is called natural blue i popped a square here but any any kind of colors primary colors would work well we've got some white paint which is not really a primary color but it's useful so i always keep a little bit of that hanging around uh which is good which is good um, and there's one more tube you can see now this one kind of optional if i'm being honest this one is um natural gray which is my shadow color this is the really popular color that we sell this one is the color of shadows and it's basically all three primary colors mixed together so red yellow and blue um, if you mix purple and put some um yellow with it you'll get a gray now why is that important well gray is the color of shadows and shadows of as we know are quite important things to have um, hanging around so certainly worth having um, some natural grey if you've not got it. So that's basically the palette, folks. There's more colours. You can use whatever colours you want for this. But, you know, it's a demonstration today. So we're going to get stuck into this thing. Um, that's the sketch. It's all nicely sketched in. Um, just want to briefly tell you a little bit about these virtual workshops folks if you're interested in taking part in a, a very much a step-by-step -step paint along session with me uh, Matthew Palmer the next one is on the 9th uh, Sunday the 9th of May 2020 but it's pretty much one every week head on over again to the website www.watercolor.tv um, click on the watercolor workshops tab at the top of the screen and you'll see which one's coming up Thirty minute watercolors, so it's it kind of makes perfect sense to do this picture in thirty minutes. So wet into wet, water goes on. Can't go wrong with this. Um, just a case of plop it on, pop it on. If you don't want to pick up a signed copy of the book, I have popped a link in the description for this video for the live video. Head on down to the post, and you'll see how to pick up a signed copy from Watercolor TV. There we go. Beautiful, nice wet into wet. The water is all nicely 
shining away and it's not a bad idea to give it a few seconds just to kind of soak in but pretty much pretty much kind of diving straight in at this point we're going to get the sky in first so a quick glance at the palette and um, this is the biggest of the brushes i'm going to just use a bit of it a yellow here to be fair i'll take some yellow um a nice bright yellow this one is natural yellow light but you might use cadmium yellow or something here as well i've got that color i'm just going to sort of pick and mix with the primary colors for this one it's nice to just to stick to a relatively close palette of colors uh working in a bit of a vignette style so i don't want a huge amount of color so loosely based on the one that's in the book but very different folks so um the book has got its own uh, lessons in very much so um, I've popped a bit of a lake here as well, we'll bring that in uh, we'll get some yellow in the penguins as well stick with this folks, it'll grow on you um, there's the yellow in the breast of the emperor penguins as it were beautiful, make sure we can see what we're doing here the spotlights are bouncing a bit of yellow and we'll try and avoid the snow because there's nothing worse than yellow snow um obviously we don't want yellow snow do we and then we'll come down to the palette we'll pop some red with it that'll give us a bit of an orange a bit of a red get some reds coming in beautiful we'll get nice and close in once we've once we've cracked on with this so just getting a little hint of reflection creeping in here as well so that's the the red mixed with the yellow to give orange so the colors very basic at this point uh, nothing too fancy here beautiful and then we'll do the same with the glue as well clean brush yes we are live here today so you never know if you're watching this back at a later stage it was originally filmed live uh, on the uh, 3rd of May 2021 this is uh, natural blue but any kind of nice blue would work well for this and we'll get the blue coming in across the top working it down into the into the evening sky beautiful just a nice soft transition in color going to get a little hint of blue in the water not a huge amount just little tiny horizontal lines working pretty quick here today folks because it is a demo it's not a workshop if again if you're on a workshop make sure you check out watercolor.tv for a step-by-step -step workshop coming up on uh, Sunday the 9th of May. I'm just going to use a bit of water on the brush just to soften these edges because I do want to make it look a little bit like a, a vinaigrette as a few people like to call it. Just work it in. So that's giving me a very simple background, beautiful, nice, vibrant starting point. I'm excited for you. Right, now what we're going to do here what we're going to do here is give this uh, we can get a bit closer in now actually give this a bit of a dry um i've got a a hair dryer or a craft tool here just going to give it a blast looks cool eh this is like watching paint dry just give it a blast or you can put the kettle on if you do i'll have a coffee milk no sugars just give it a blast a virtual coffee the future I'm telling you perfect now once the paper's pretty much dry you can use your hand to press it flat as well once it's dry enough once the paper goes a little bit wavy you can pre-stretch it but you know something I soon realised after 25 28 years of painting I realised that life's too short um, so I just don't bother basically it flattens itself so a nice dry beautiful and just while it has that final dry just take a little glance I want to give you a tour of the studio folks a few people have asked if they can see some of the paintings around so here some animal watercolours that I've done squirrel there on a, a wintry branch there's a tiger this is the sort of style that I like to do over here there's a Jack Russell um, these are all in the book folks Kingfisher and some giraffes as well so that's the kind of style of watercolour what I like to do so there we go back to the picture 
marvellous. Let's bring in the landscape now. Let's bring in the landscape on this thing, add some nice definition to it. We can get a bit closer in because we are going to work on the landscape at this particular point. Marvellous. Can't go wrong. Right, okay, let's paint in some landscape folks. What we'll do is get down to the palette and we're going to use a size 10 brush working down the brush at this point and I want to use some of the blue we've got the blue here again this is natural blue but you might have you know ultramarine or something this is the gray we mentioned the gray at the beginning so you can mix the gray yourself on primary colors but I'm using it um, ready-made it just makes the job easier and it's a very popular color called Matthew Palmer's natural gray and it's basically the most used color of all so we've got a gray we've got the blue wonderful uh, we'll have a thicker grey as well just here, we'll pop that to one side because I'm just kind of, I'm, I've got a little bit of a test page hanging around here, it's, it's always nice to sort of test your colours a little bit and um, make sure you're happy with the consistency, that kind of thing. Let's start with the paler grey and let's build this thing up, let's build this thing up uh, very, very simply, everything like I said, it's all nice and dry at this point. Uh, which of course is very important we need it to be all nice and dry and sort of ready to go and it's basically building up building up the shadows the distant Antarctic landscape you can smell the fear now everything's nice and dry here so we're going to paint in some sort of misty rocky mountainous areas in the background clean that brush get a bit of water on the brush and then we're going to smooth it down. The paper's dry at this point, which is spot on. Give it some texture, give it some contours and move it and blend it. Beautiful, instant results. Natural grey is transparent. That's why we tend to use this rather than the likes of Payne's grey. Payne's grey is okay. For me, it's a bit dark. It's a bit dark. I'm using the darker grey here. Um, it's the same colour, just a bit thicker. And then we'll also bring in the blue on this, this piece as well. So we'll bring that down, we'll loosely bring it towards the penguins here. Again, clean the brush on the tissue and then get some, get some texture, get some blending, get some movement in the paint. Love the jubbly. Brilliant. Okay, that's good. And then we'll sort of work back and forward into that area as we progress over the next sort of 20 minutes or so. So let's work down here towards the foreground. Uh, we're gonna paint in a bit of an edge where these guys are walking in between the penguins here. Pop some shadows on and then we'll get water. That's kind of a bit of, it's kind of a bit of both colors there, I'm honest. There's a bit of the blue on it. Um, and there's a bit of the, uh, bit of the gray, natural gray. Give it some, give it some blends. Give it some blend, wet on dry. So that means the paper is dry as I'm working, but then I'm using wet paint and water to blend the paint away. Soften it in, soften it in. I love painting snow the best of the time, so any excuse really. And to be to be honest, the weather here in the UK at the minute, especially where we are in Derbyshire, it feels like the winter. It's not exactly the best of uh, bank holiday weathers. Brilliant, again, we're gonna work this up. Very quick dry, very quick dry. Let's have a go here, get the dryer on the job. There we go, again, like watching paint dry. It's like a script. Um, Thanks if you've just joined us folks. Thanks for joining us in this little watercolour demo here today. Painting animals in watercolour, 30 minute, inspired by the new book, Animals in Watercolour, published by Search Press. There it is. Check it out folks on Search Press's website or on get a signed copy on Watercolour TV. Lovely jubbly, we'll come down here and we'll just add a little bit more detail to these distant hills, mountains, whatever they are, rocky outcrops, I don't know, doesn't matter. It's painting, we can do what we like. And it's bank holiday, so there's no excuses. Loving the uh, colours, the grey and the blue working lovely together. 
we've got a bit of landscape going off here as well. Um, so for this, I want to be more focusing on the blue. So any blue, this particular one is natural blue, avoiding the penguins, of course. Bring that over. Just use water. There we go. Bro, okay, so it's just a couple of taps on the tissue when you blend paint away. You don't want to be too... too wet with your brush, or certainly not too dry as well. So it's getting the balance right, really, if we're honest. Let's just pop in some shadows on these hills. Yeah, but where's your light coming from? Doesn't really matter, to be fair. Whatever works to the picture. I'm just adding some texture. That's the most common thing people say to me. Well, they used to in the normal world, before lockdowns and things. Where's your light coming from? The other one is, did you wet it first? That's what I'm gonna call my book. Did you wet it first? Maybe that off Fifty Shades of Grey. Brill, okay, so you can see that's got that nice bit of character. I'm just adding more and more shadows to these these hills to create a little bit of a little bit of rugged texture. You can see how I've formed the background hills there. Very simple. Just using some of the stuff that's in the palette to be fair. We're gonna darken the edge a little bit here, put a little bit of texture below the penguins and just add a little bit of extra darkness. Quick jump down to the palette will show you that there's not much happening down here. It's not very exciting, is it really? That's natural grey, which is kind of blue, red and yellow. Mix purple, add a bit of yellow, you've got grey. You've got the grey. doesn't really matter if you mix the grey. Try and avoid using Payne's grey for something like this though. Every artist have got their own opinion on what shadow colour works for them, but this has worked for me, almost 30 years of painting experience, 20 odd years of teaching, you know, tells me that it's a it's a useful colour, it's a useful colour. Because it's transparent, it's soft, it blends, and it doesn't go too harsh, and it's not too aggressive, neither. Can you see how we're starting to mould the landscape a little bit? And the fact it's transparent means that you can really create depth and you know like here where you can see through that mountain at the back it really gives that interesting effect of um, separation we're also going to do something in the water here as well we're going to paint a nice dark line so it's a bit of an interesting lesson that he's like the high pitched squeal then so oh, got a bit of a sore throat today i think the hay fever's kicking in i'm going to bring that across here and all the way across to that penguin there we're going to stop where that penguin starts bit of water and we're going to soften it in so that will help to give separation of water frozen lake whatever whatever it is we don't know do we we don't know use your imagination so you've got a landscape lesson here as well landscape and animals all thrown into 30 minutes of painting time that is by the time I've done rambling, it's more like more like an hour, but you know what I'm like. If you watch me paint before, I like to rattle a lot. Stop you doing sleep, that's basically what it is. Over here as well. Pop a little bit of shadow in there. Beautiful. Again, water through a piece of kitchen paper. And when I say a piece of kitchen paper, I mean that. I found it hanging from a tree in the garden. Thought we'll use that. It smells a bit funny to be fair. Bring it in. Beautiful. Little bits of little bits of shadows, little bits of texture. Loving all this. Look how it's look how it's starting to build up the shape. This is using literally that grey. I'm also gonna pop some little bits of this grey on the edge. Down here as well. Lovely jubbly. If I get really close in here so you can sort of see some of the texture and um, using a rich grey I can actually do what we call dry brush if you're not sure what a dry brush is 
it's the opposite of a wet one and it's just got less paint on it but this is where you can start to utilize the paper almost put little bits of rocky areas poking through can you see how you can sort of drag it you can almost scuff it against the look how beautiful that is you can almost kind of scuff it against the grain of the paper wouldn't do anything at the back if i'm honest i think that's as fine as it is i'd leave that alone um but i would certainly add texture and grain to some of this landscape area here i'm kind of picking it up giving it a bit of a tap on tissue and then i know there's less paint on the brush that's giving me control over the paint and you can sort of follow the contour as well got the sh nice shadows from the penguins there as well so it really does all help every little helps where have you had that before bring it in and again making sure we're nice and nice and dark along the edge giving that an extra coat of colour so that really separates the water what we could also do here as well is we could spray splay spray splay the bristles a little bit and we can drop some reflect reflections down in the water I call these skid marks keep it clean but it just helps to give a see that little sense of depth it's very subtle with a silent bee and you can bring it in just gives a little bit of drop don't it you know what I mean you get that sense of reflection instantly you know what that's a good little landscape folks what I want to do is start to work on the penguins now It's just I'm just I'm sort of looking back walking back a little bit taking a look at the picture having a go at it and just you know just sort of creating that little bit of um, added clarity to it but I think that's enough information to give us a wintry landscape hopefully you can see it there it kind of works nice What we're going to do here is get some clean kitchen paper a few colors uh strong strong gray very strong gray natural gray there it is we also want some more yellow as well so a nice rich yellow make sure the yellow is nice and clean we're also going to mix <coughs> a bit of orange so the red and the yellow together as well so you can see we're quite strong and then we've got this paler gray here hanging around as well so we've got a few colors a lighter gray a dark gray uh an orange mix from primary colors and a rich yellow as well it's all good it's all good it really is back here then we can get a little bit closer into these guys i think for this so we can see what's happening beautiful and what we'll do is we'll add i'm just going to rotate the board a fraction here you can see I'm being much more vivid with the colours at this particular point. I'm going to bring this in here. Now, people often say, what pencil do I use? Well, this is just a normal sort of HB style pencil. There's nothing fancy about it. That's the yellow. Clean brush. A few taps and then yellow is very easy to blend, especially if you use it thick. We're going to work that across here for the emperors keep cleaning the brush on the tissue smooth it all in smooth it all in give it a nice a nice blend a nice soften is what we're interested in i'll pick up some of that orange because there's a little hint of orange comes in down the back here and also down the back of the head on this guy 
little bit creeping in and then I'm just going to use a bit of water on the brush just to encourage the colours to disappear and make them blend a little bit more I want to drop a tiny hint of that colour in the actual beaks of the penguins for the minute okay so far so good that's good make sure that everything is nicely blending um, which it is seems to be and now we're going to go darker we're going to go stronger we're going to go heavy with the grey whatever brush works for you at the end of the day for me I'm more than happy to use a number six brush because I know it's quite a pointy brush you can always use a rigger brush of course if you want to get extra extra detail we'll put the eyes in later I won't worry about the eyes we'll keep an eye on it what we'll do is bring it in this is using a very heavy grey okay don't be afraid to use some rich colour here folks will you taper that line around there slight rotation of the board rotate the board to a comfortable angle anytime you want to bring it through what I want to do here is just clean the brush wipe it on the tissue and then ever so carefully just give it a nice soften so you get a little bit of lightness creeping in there same on this as well I want to taper this line down more and also I want to bring some grey just creeping up the back of the head there smashing let's just clean that brush wipe it on the tissue kitchen paper and give it a gentle soft up. we'll get the eye in a little bit later on let's paint in some base to the penguins So if you do remember that what we're doing here is very much a demonstration compared to a, an actual workshop style. This is me working at my little pace. There we go. Clean brush again through the tissue. Rotate the board to whatever's comfortable. I've almost tried the brush off at this point. Because I don't want to blend away the colours too much, I just want to gently feather them. Just a little bit of feather going off here. Subtle feather. We can also make sure that what we've got at the base here is quite a definite shadow. Yeah, but where's your light coming from? just a dark just a the sun has gone down the lighter gray the lighter gray would be a lovely color to complete the area of penguin on that side so he's got presents there he is a penguin what's the classic one why don't penguin why don't polar bears eat penguins? Because they can't get the wrappers off. You don't know what I mean. If you're not from the UK, Google penguin chocolate bars. Right, let's do this guy here. Just the same, pretty much blocking the colours. And away we go. And um, we'll come back and put the eye on. Um, and some final little bits of detail. 
let's come round here beautiful this guy's on a mission somewhere he's trudging off somewhere I love that trudging it's a great little phrase trudging let's just uh, hold your brush like a pencil here rest on your paper again down that edge bit of water soften it all in lovely jubbly same down here can't beat a bit of grey bring bring this wing in here and then we'll come down into that wing like I did on the other wing I'm just going to use a bit of water just to create a bit of blend there magic and then we're going to go slightly darker down the back of that wing and into the tail Again, it's all still very much based around this grey here, look. Nice strong colour. Um, again, if you want to mix your own grey, like this, a natural looking grey rather than something that's too too black, too harsh. Because the problem with Payne's grey um, and similar colours is it uses a lot of uh, black pigment, which is, which is okay for painting dark objects, but not really good for a soft shadowy sort of watercolour in my opinion um, so I always think it's better to mix a grey that's a personal opinion of course I mean everyone's got their own opinion on what works for them I'm going to bring in a bit of a shadow down here a bit of a V shape there and then just use a bit of water to encourage that paint to disappear into the rest of the body. Lovely, and then we'll pop in the the feet, happy feet. And put a little bit of tonal work going up into that area as well. Again, we'll get the shadows on, we'll get the shadows in. like we did before doesn't really matter which direction in my opinion as long as it gives it a base it grounds it the sun's gone down the lighter grey as we mentioned previously is good for doing the completion of the shape well while I'm kind of kind of close in look how them guys are looking Loving the landscape. Um, while we're kind of close in here, perhaps what we're going to do is take um, some more of that grey with this brush and just put a few little crisper areas of painting. So I want to darken the edge of the water a little bit here. Put a few ripples. And make sure things are nice and dark on the edge here and then just pop some little extra bits of dark into the penguin's head in various places that dark on dark is always a good description of that so giving it a second coat of colour bit of texture bit of dry brush work
which is really effective. Just extend some shadows. Now it's always good. That's how you're looking, folks. Looking nice. Um, it's always good to bring in some um, highlights here and there. And for this, there's a couple of ways to do this. Quick, quick blast with the dryer. Use a craft knife. Especially with something that's got texture on. Quite a sharp knife. And a bit of white paint would be good if you need it. But personally, I don't think we do on this picture. It's all nice and dry. Craft knife, useful for a few things. We can use it physically scrape the paper on something that's got mountains and landscape shape like this, especially in like a winter environment. You can scrape off the colour. People have a fear about doing this. And for good cause, I think, as well. But you know something? It's not a problem. It's lovely in water. Look at that. It makes it look crisp and, like, reflective and sparkly and stuff. And, of course, we could use it in the penguins to get the eye as well. So I'm just going to scrape a little bit of colour off of the eye. Just that little bit of line. Can you can even see that. That little tiny... Look at that. It's enough. It's in that little scrape with a craft knife is just enough to give the eyes of the penguin. Beautiful. And then we'll come back to the whole thing here because what I want to do is I want to scrape some little horizontal areas around. Kind of following the contour. It makes it look crisp. If you look really close at that scrape, you can really see how much of a crisp effect it gives. Really works nice, I must admit it does. Um, and happy with the way that painting has kind of come together there. That's penguins and in watercolour. I hope you enjoyed it folks. I hope you're keeping well, keeping safe and keeping the paint flowing. I'll see you next time for more watercolour action. Take care.